Superbase Launch Week 5 starts on Monday the 15th of August. Here's some highlights from when we met with the Dino team in Launch Week 4 to discuss the brand new Superbase functions. Well, first of all, if you're joining and you don't know what Superbase is, Superbase is an open source Firebase alternative and we're building the features of Firebase using open source tools. We've been running since January 2020 we launched and um, we got into this mode where we kind of ship as fast as we can. But the core of Superbase is around the database, the um, Postgres database that we offer. Um, you can sign up and you get a hosted uh, Postgres database. And we build a lot of tooling around the database and we try to use existing open source tools to provide these features. But every single launch week, uh, people would request one major thing, uh, which is functions. And in particular, as you said, not database functions. They had to be uh, functions, serverless functions that you would write in JavaScript or TypeScript and um, you know run some custom code. So um, we ended up landing on um, using Dino. But um, really, at the start, Indian, maybe you want to discuss, we were really tossing up a lot between a few different ideas, which are um, basically containers as a service and then functions as a service. Yeah, so um, functions, yeah, as Kapil mentioned, there's like, it's been asked for quite a lot. And it took, uh, yeah, for a few weeks of just going through different uh, products, designs, iterations. Uh, we explored, we, I tried out pretty much every single functions platform that's out there and realized there are like two main flavors. One is like containers as a service where you can pretty much run any workload you want. It gives you flexibility on the language. Uh, it gives you flexibility on how long the uh, functions can run. And that's the advantage of using containers as a service. But the other extreme is like pure functions where you just write your business logic you don't need to worry about the operating system. You don't need to worry about like keeping your like, operating system or your Docker image dependencies up to date and so on. And usually context functions start up much faster because they are pretty lightweight. And uh, since we have wanted that uh, as a very key thing, if your functions take long to deploy a startup, you don't really have that nice experience of working with functions. So that was a key feature for us. And we also felt that we could provide a very good DX that uh, our users are used to. Uh, if you have used Next.js before, you have already used functions as a service, right? Uh, anything under API routes is a function. So we wanted to sort of get that kind of experience. And uh, so that's why we decided to use functions. And the other thing was uh, where to deploy the function itself. Uh, if your database is in one region, say US, and your user is in Australia, uh, the function launches up in Australia. So the latency is going to be pretty small because the function is close to the user, SSL handshakes, everything's going to be fast. And so that's sort of like the whole thought process. There are a lot of other things that we considered like platform security, how scalable it is, uh, is it open source, how good the local development experience is going to look like. So yeah, there's like a quite a lot of thought uh, into choosing the platform before we settled on Dino. Yeah, and I think, I think this is pretty powerful. Like when I was playing around with it and just, you know, you can actually spin up, I think like including the installation of the CLI, which takes the longest time, uh, you can like deploy your function in, in like 90 seconds, um, like create it, deploy it. The deployment is actually just a, a, a couple seconds, but then you get the URL, you click through, you see it in the dashboard, you get your locks, your locks are refreshing. Uh, in real time, you get like the little notification up there. We have some fabulous guests. Uh, welcome, Aaron, <laughs> CJ, and we actually have a, a last minute special guest as well, Luca. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I work at the Dino company with Luca. Um, you know, I focus mainly on deploy. And so, uh, you know, with Luca, you know, Luca and I implemented a good chunk of the um, infrastructure that uh, Superbase is using to kind of build out these functions. And so, yeah, I'm excited to you know, get this launched and get user feedback. Everyone, I'm CJ. I'm a developer advocate over at Stripe. Uh, Thor and I used to work together. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, Stripe is uh, a platform for accepting payments and managing payouts and generally manage, managing your online business. And so we've got uh, an API. We've been working on a, a client library that we're excited to to share with you today. Yeah, hey, uh, I'm, I work at the Dino company together with Aaron as well. Um, I work on the deploy project. Um, I also work on the Dino CLI, and I'm also a delegate at TC39. So that's the JavaScript uh, standards committee. Uh, so we chose 
I think the main hook that got me for Dino Deploy specifically was the playground experience that Dino had. Like you, uh, so Dino has this nice experience where you go to the website, you type out a function, and when you press save, uh, it gets deployed in seconds. And either they also have this command S where you save like you would do in a local editor, and it actually gets deployed around the world, and you see the editor on the right refresh, which was a pretty nice experience. So that was one thing why I like the platform, but uh, Dino, the language itself, yeah, coming from like a Node.js background, it just solved so many issues that I had uh, with uh, Dino, the language, it's all out of the box, uh, which makes it uh, a pretty nice language to use. And also uh, on the security side of things, I really like that Dino was locked by default. Uh, you might have seen so many supply chain attacks that come into the picture uh, with Node.js, there have been some pretty nasty vulnerabilities because some either voluntarily some maintainer wants to make a statement and you know introduces a bug or someone's npm token gets compromised and you know your secrets are being sent off to uh, the attacker's origin. Uh, one cool thing that I liked about Dino was that it's locked by default, so you can say like, hey this function can only talk to this origin and nothing else. So if it tries to make a request with your nvars to attacker.com, it's going to be blocked, right? Which is a very powerful experience, uh, I feel. Mm, I think so uh, when you deploy a function with um, Superbase, uh, there's a couple of things that happen behind the scenes, but in the end, it will uh, end up being deployed via Dino deploy in, yeah. uh, I believe, 29 regions around the, the globe. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about sort of why uh, you decided to build Dino deploy and how that came about. Yeah, um, I mean, well, like first and foremost, you know, Dino deploy uh, exists to provide a great place for people to deploy their Dino applications. Uh, that's one of the core reasons. I also think, you know, one of the other things is, you know, I think there's, um, you know, over time, we've seen an evolution of kind of compute primitives that developers use to build their applications. We've kind of evolved from like VMs to containers to isolates. And at the Dino company, we kind of see that, you know, on the horizon, the kind of the advent of, uh, instead of kind of container clouds or VM clouds, uh, potentially um, isolate clouds. And so Cloudflare is another company that's also kind of working on these new primitives. And we think there's a lot of really, really interesting uh, properties of uh, isolate clouds. Obviously, you know, they're a little more specific. They mainly run JavaScript, TypeScript, and Wasm, but they're much more secure, much more scalable. Uh, your cold start times can be much smaller, right? If you're booting up a VM, it's on the order of seconds. A container is roughly 100 milliseconds. Uh, or, but you know, with isolates, you can get sub 10 milliseconds or closer to a millisecond in terms of order of magnitude. Kind of maybe uh, for you, what's exciting about you know partnering with uh, companies like Superbase? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a few things that are really interesting. Uh, you know, you, you know, Superbase often positions itself as a open source version of um, Firebase, and I've used Firebase in the past, and kind of really love the simplification of the stack that it provides. But um, I think there's a, you know, another interesting thing is I think we have a lot of shared values between our organizations. You know, we're built around open source. We're built around kind of providing developers with great primitives and foundations to build great applications, right? We're both, I mean, in, in different ways and in different areas, Superbase is more focused on the database and augmenting that. We're a little more focused on like the language, the runtime and isolates, but we both kind of share that core mission of, you know, really empowering developers to build great applications. Um, Superbase has also seen, you know, kind of great traction and adoption there. And it's nice to, you know, to play a part in enabling that and you know helping Superbase build features like Cloud Functions, and maybe uh, <laughs> CJ, you can you can tell us a little bit about the uh, the modifications to uh, Stripe Note. I believe that you made to make it work in Dino, and maybe if there are certain things to watch out for, specifically when it comes to payments and security and working with uh, Dino. Yeah, so uh, Stripe Note is a client library. It's this uh, it's an API wrapper that was written in JavaScript in 2011 so it is like older than most of our <laughs> careers right so uh yeah like uh it's it it was born a really really long time ago and stripe node has for a very long time depended on the http module inside of node which we know is like not part of uh dino and like we wanted to be able to expose the ability to use that fetch api the built-in fetch api and so 
what we did is we made a couple modifications to the constructor function when you're just like initializing and setting up Stripe nodes so that you can pass in your own HTTP client. Um, so it was, it's actually like a, a very small change they need to make. And we wanted to like really keep that developer experience really tight when you were using uh, the Stripe node client library in, in any environment. But we especially heard tons of demand from developers who wanted to do these deploys either to Cloudflare edge functions or they wanted to use it with Dino. And so, yeah, there on line nine, we have this one sort of argument that you can pass when you're constructing it that you... Um, that you say you want to use fetch instead of using the built-in node HTTP module. Yeah. Now, like your super base functions can be spun up, and now you can you know create payment intents or checkout sessions or redirect to the billing portal uh, that is part of Stripe uh, pretty simply. And so, yeah, I think Thor has a sweet demo that's like React Native <laughs> with uh, this really cool backend. So hopefully, we'll get to see that. I don't know. Uh, we can just say super base functions deploy, and then we uh, put in the name of our function, which is the payment sheet. We fire that off. And as I mentioned, I was cocky, so I'm going to try uh, and race this with uh, opening. Yeah, so there we are. Um, we are deployed within a couple of seconds. And so you can see now I'm locked in. Um, we found the customer, and we can just hit checkout. And we see the stored payment methods for that customer here. Just uh, click that here. And boom, payment successful. And then the really cool thing is here, I have my function deployed. I can just uh, click on the link, and I can open up. Uh, you can see here, the function is active. Uh, but then also, you get some useful commands here. You can invoke your function if you want to test it. You know, In the end, it's just a, a post request. Uh, and here, you can see how you can manage your secrets. But then I think what's really cool is you can dive kind of into um, the invocations here, maybe look uh, yeah, at the last uh, hours, and you can see kind of what's been happening. So here, we've got that one from the 1st of April. We get some details. Have a look at that. And yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing experience, I have to say. Yeah, and I, I think largely kudos to the Dino team, who obviously have a fanatical um, sort of approach to developer experience here. The deployments go globally around the world in, in less than a second. It's just... Uh, a, a crazy experience when you see it first time. So, um, yeah, I just want to make sure that people understand that the the power is largely coming from Dino. We do some nice things to wrap it, but, um, yeah, it's the Dino team that have done really the hard work there. So we have a question here, which is, why Edge functions instead of just functions? What Edge stands for? Uh, Edge basically just means it is deployed to many, many different regions, locations around the globe. And so, uh, you know, no matter where your users are, they are always holding on to the edge of one of those functions. Launch week five starts on 15th of August. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss a moment.